If you know anything about Roman history, you've probably heard of Emperor Nero, who's associated with some pretty heavy stuff, like extravagance, tyranny, murder, murder, murder. He murdered a lot of people. His reputation for death and destruction was so bad that in the early centuries, many believed he was the actual Antichrist. But the real story is a little more complicated. Nero was born in 37 AD in Antium, Italy and became emperor at just age 17. Nero's legacy is marked by extreme contradiction. On the one hand, Nero used his position of power to enact some progressive changes in Rome, like ending private trials, banning capital punishment, and giving slaves the right to sue their unjust owners. But on the other hand, he developed a reputation for unbridled depravity that is really hard to reconcile. He supposedly went about seducing married women and young boys and murdering people at random. It's also believed that he poisoned his stepbrother Britannicus because he was jealous of his singing voice and status. So how do we understand this back and forth? Well, most of the sources we have on Nero come from historians who weren't firsthand witnesses and didn't share his politics. So they would have reason to paint him in a bad light but that doesn't make him innocent. Many of Nero's contemporaries were extremely violent, murdering family members and friends to maintain political power. But Nero went beyond the norm, like when he ordered a Roman soldier to kill his own mother in 59 AD, claiming she was guilty of treason and her death was a matter of public safety. The public did not buy that excuse. After that, bad things started happening in Rome. Unlucky birds settled in the capital, earthquakes destroyed homes, and violent mobs erupted in the streets, which many people interpreted as omens. Nero's behavior was putting out some real bad juvies. And then there was the actual hellfire. In July of 64 AD, the Great Fire of Rome began. It lasted six days and destroyed almost the entire city. And while many blamed Nero for starting the fire and not doing enough to help the people, other accounts say he provided food and shelter to victims and even joined the search and rescue parties. But then Nero went and blamed the fire on the Christians without any evidence and ordered them to be thrown to the dogs, burned, and crucified, starting the trend of Christian persecution in Rome. He did rebuild Rome after the fire, but this also meant building a golden palace complete with a 100-foot-tall bronze statue of himself. Eventually, everyone had enough of Nero's antics, and in 68 AD, the Senate declared him public enemy number one, turning the army against him. Nero fled and committed suicide by stabbing himself in the throat, but not before he proclaimed, what an artist dies in me. So yeah, Nero is surely not a great guy, but he probably also wasn't the Antichrist. I mean, his story reminds us that history is never so clear. It's easy to write off Nero as a monster. It's a lot harder to admit that sometimes bad people can contribute some good things.